Leave my brassicas alone. Y'all look here like y'all. Eating my damn collards. And my cilantro. Go in there in your little space. Go in, please, and thank you. So we are out here cleaning the turkey space. And they're out there eating my garden. Anyways, I got these on February 14th at two days old. So now they are four months. And they will be ready for harvesting any day now. I usually like to harvest them when they're not too big. And as you can see, they are very big already. They grow very fast. And the uh, broad-breasted white turkey. And hubby is in here helping me out. He is cleaning up this space making it nice and clean for them and then we are going to put down some fresh pine shavings here come on down i don't know why they keep up in there it has rained quite a bit and so there's it's muddy out here in their little run space but they'll be all right because we're going to clean out here and we're going to put some pine shavings down these birds are on sex, so I have both males and females here. I don't have any specific amount of males or females when I'm ordering it. And that's just how they sell them. It doesn't matter. But I know I have a couple males in there because you can see the difference in the features on them. But why are you under there? Get out. Look at the feet, how big the feet are, like dinosaur feet, to be honest with you. But um, we're out here getting them cleaned up, y'all. I have yet to see videos of people raising turkey for meat, actually. I have not raised any yet to egg stage, and I won't use these for that, but I would use a heritage breed. And I do have one heritage breed turkey. And let me go around and show you that breed. So this bird right down the back there. Let me see if I can focus in. I think I'll get a better look out here. Let me see if I can zoom in. That white turkey that's sitting right there. Why would you do that? Is a royal palm. And that's, that's a heritage. There it is. It's standing. It's a royal palm and it's a heritage breed. Not you. Get out the way. Please and thank you. But um, and these right here are the broad-breasted bronze, and these are just you trying to peck my finger. I ow, oh, that hurts. That hurts. Okay, that hurts. Stop doing that. But um, these are broad-breasted bronze, and I raise them just for meat. I was able to get locally some other breeds i had one royal palm one blue slate one narragansett and one bourbon red and the only one that survived was this this white one right here and that's the royal palm these right here i did get a total of 10 turkeys and right now i have i believe seven left because turkeys this year were it was really trying and the turkeys didn't seem like they held up really well i would say to the weather and that's just my take on it um i did have to go back to the local place where i got the four uh heritage breed turkeys and they were saying that there were so many complaints about the turkeys from the hatchery that's why they're not ordering more and this was sometime last month we were just hoping that they did order some more turkey so we can get some more um just to replace the one that the ones that we have lost but they were saying it's not worth it for them and they were having too many complaints from customers and they had to refund them you know all the money so it was a loss for them and so we weren't able to I mean, we did get the refund, but at the same time, we would rather, hey, 
we would rather have the birds instead of getting the money back. And one of these birds, the, excuse me, I'm not talking about you, come over here. One of these birds right here, turkeys, uh, cost us $16.95, so we did get four of these. And these right here, I paid, for the 10 of them, I paid $107 from the hatchery, straight from the hatchery. And that's these broad-breasted bronze turkeys right here. So it's an investment, and I don't mind doing it. I don't mind spending the money because I know where my family's food come from, where the meat come from, how they're raised, the conditions they're raised in. And so I don't mind doing this. Oh, look at this. This is one of the birds that I hatched. If you've seen my videos, I knew it was a gold lace wine dot mix. So this, the hen that laid this egg was a gold lace wine dot. And of course, the rooster is right here. So this is what the rooster look, looks like. And I'll show you the gold lace wine dot right here. And now this is the offspring. And it does have features of the gold lace wine dot, but this video is not about the chickens. And of course it's a rooster, as you can see, the comb and the waddle, the size of it, you can tell it is definitely a rooster. Because look at the comb on the hen right here. See this hen right here? Look how smaller the comb is. But back to the turkeys now. I'm going to take you back to the older birds that I have that we're getting ready to harvest pretty soon. <laughs> Excuse me. Don't be rude. I'm just doing my walkthrough. Uh, what? What's the matter? What is the matter? And guys, we had some fighting because they were fighting, I believe, to, to establish the pecking order. What do you need, honey? The fine shaving. Okay. And um, so... I would just, when they're sparring, I just let them be and let them figure it out themselves. But I stay close and I watch them to make sure that they're not actually hurt, hurting each other. And I also do learn every time something new about them. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. I learn something new about them because I have never seen them fought like this before. I don't know if it's because the amount of meals that are in here. But out of these eight birds, I have six males from what I've seen, the features on them. And so I believe it's because it's an overwhelming amount of males versus females. So they're just fighting for territory and seniority and all that stuff that happens naturally. Let me just remove this. Hubby is done cleaning. So he's putting the pine shavings down. Hey you, that's a female. You can see that little thing on her nose, like a little button. I call it a little button. So that's one right there. That that's what a female looks like, and that's how I can distinguish the difference between the male and the female. And I'll show you the male one, cause that little button is bigger or longer, I should say. I know. I'm getting in your way, cause I just need a shot. Please and thank you. I guess you don't want me to get a shot, but there it is. See how that that little button is longer on top of the nose? The female looks more like a little button, but this one is actually a distinguished growth there. Let me get this out of your way, and I have composting stuff, natural composting stuff here that I can use. And compost this let it break down for my garden so I can feed my soil naturally that's the benefits of us raising our turkeys and our chickens the way we do and using the materials that we use because it benefits us it's an investment to promote healthy soil and to continue living this lifestyle and being able to use natural materials
and giving it back to the soil. It's good for the environment. It's good for the microorganisms. And let me get this out of your way so you can get get down. So we have the feed right here. They don't need any feed. It's just like half full. Yeah, it's half full. Yeah. So if you look here, you'll see how nice and clean they have their roof space that they can roost up on there tonight. And they're out here waddling in the mud a little bit because that rain that we had did a number. They can use this step that I built for them and go up in there if they want to. Or they can actually just fly up in there. You're happy. I know you're happy. You need to come out in the run. Because you have more space in the run. Come on. Come on. See, I'm talking their language. And that's a male. Look how red the neck has gotten. And this just started to hop. Look. See? Yeah, for some reason, I don't know what that means, but I just pay attention to it. And that actually is a male. It's probably the dominant male. That's what I'm thinking, because all the other males are not that red. It just happened when I made that sound, that call. So it's very alert. Yep, and that's the one that's actually answering me. See? That's the one that's answering. So I guess they've already established their pecking order and they know who's the boss. <laughs> so that's the boss right there that's answering me. <laughs> yep, that's a meal, y'all. That's what he looks like. Don't be scared. You can come down. So I have eight of them out of ten. I got ten of them and two didn't make it because the weather was really terrible. It was cold, you know, and they just didn't survive the shipment. So I was able to keep eight of them out of ten alive and I'm happy that I was able to do so. But nevertheless, I will keep getting them and I believe they were hatched and were healthy birds, but it's just a situation of them having to travel with no food, with no water, and with no heat. And like I said before, turkeys are way more fragile than chickens. And sometimes you have to, well not sometimes, I would say a lot of the times I actually spend way more time with the turkeys when they're baby chicks than with my chickens because the turkeys do not know what to do. And this is the reason why I try to get my chickens the same time I get my turkeys because the, because the chickens actually teaches the turkeys where to go get their food, where to go get their water how to roost and all of that stuff. They teach them to dust bathe and all of that stuff. So this is just my method and the way I choose to do it and it works out great for us. I have never had any issues with it. My only issues with my turkey is just trying to revive them, you know, from that travel when, when I receive them at the post office. But for now, this is just a little update of how my turkeys are doing and <laughs> and they uh, see and hubby is in this game with me like we do this together it's a whole teamwork that we enjoy and it's great that we're on the same page and we're doing this together as a team so it works out great for us but um i'll continue doing this as long as i can as long as i eat meat because i'm a meat eater we eat meat eaters <laughs> But it's, you know, just powerful that we're able to do it ourselves and raise our birds ourselves. We can take this part back into our hands. We know our food is coming from and we're able to actually take care of them the way we do and have learned skills along the way while we do that and be able to survive. I hope you do enjoy this video. Feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. And as always, thank you for watching. And I'll see you again next time right here on Fifi's Journey.